Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about different data sets used in Delta Live Table. In my previous videos, I talked about introduction to Delta Live Tables and also the differences between declarative and procedural approaches. It's important to understand the declarative approach because that concept use, is used in Delta Live Table. Right, this video onwards, I am going to talk about different building blocks of Delta Live Table ETL pipeline. So in order to start the development, first we have to create, we have to define different data sets within Delta Live Table. So in this video, I am going to talk about different types of data sets which are used in Delta Live Table. Coming to different types, we are having three different types of data sets for Delta Live Table. The first one is streaming table. The second one is materialized view. This is also called as live table. So both are uh, interchangeable, either materialized view or live table. Both are same concepts. The third one is view. We understood there are three different types of uh, data sets. Now I will uh, explain more in details about each of the data set so that you can get better understanding for which uh, scenario, for which use case we can go with which kind of data set. Right. Starting with the streaming table, streaming table that is more suitable to consume incremental data from the streaming uh, data sources. So when we are talking about streaming data sources, that is working in the concept of append only uh, mode, which means in any of the streaming uh, source system, the data will not be changed for the old data. The examples of like Kafka, Azure Event Hub, even Azure Data Lake Storage, Kinesis, you know, these are the examples of streaming data sources. When we have to consume data from these kind of source systems, we can go with streaming table. So these kind of source systems will keep on adding new data files or new data records time to time, but it is not going to update any old records. As a result, we don't need to process, reprocess any of the old data, which means any data file or any data record can be processed only once in streaming table. And coming to processing method, streaming table is mostly using auto loader. I have already posted one video, the video number 121. I talked about auto loader. In case you don't have much idea about auto loader, I highly recommend to watch that video before coming to this one. Uh, and coming to streaming table, auto loader is not the only option. Even we can go with Kafka, even other uh, streaming solutions as well. But uh, auto loader, that is one of the most commonly used uh, 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 file format or no ingestion uh, tool, which is used for streaming table. And coming to auto loader that is used to automatically detect and incrementally process new data files as soon as they arrive. And uh, internally auto loader is uh, using cloud storage and message use in order to complete the incremental ingestion. Right. And what are the different use cases we can go with the streaming table whenever we have to process huge amount of data which is uh, growing uh, with high velocity and where low latency is expected. You know, for these kind of scenarios, we can think of streaming uh, table and also uh, certain use cases where we don't need to recompute the past data. You know, we don't need to touch old data. Whenever we are getting new data, we have to focus only on the new data. Then for those kind of use cases also, we can think about streaming table. And finally, streaming table that is more suitable for extraction stages. In any ETL pipeline, we are having three stages, extraction, transformation and loading. And coming to streaming table, that is more suitable for extraction stage, which means bronze layer in any metallian architecture. So basically, this extraction stage that is uh, dealing with different source systems, it is integrating with source systems. So whenever we have to consume data from streaming sources like Kafka or Azure Event Hub, then we can think of building a streaming table. Right. Moving to next uh, data set, which is materialized view. This is quite similar to uh, any traditional database. In most of the traditional databases, we are having this concept, materialized view. What is materialized view? Basically, we are defining one query, which is consuming data from one or more than one table by joining. And uh, it is applying various uh, complex you know, transformations as well. Then that uh, final query would be executed and the output will be stored in one of the table. So that is called materialized view. In regular view also, we are defining a query, but uh, the execution will happen dynamically each time while we are calling that view but it is not storing the data anywhere but coming to materialized view we are uh, defining a query the query will be executed then the output will be stored as a live table 
so as i mentioned earlier materialized view is also called as live table so we are defining a query that query will be executed the output of that query will be stored as a live table and this is more suitable for cd cdc related use cases which means change uh, data capture which means in case there is some changes needed for the past data then we can go with that you know any dml operation it could be insert update or delete anything can be handled for those kind of scenarios we can go with materialized view so uh, this is nothing but result of a query that is stored as a live table and manual uh, uh, dml operations which means you know manually we cannot insert or update or delete within the materialized view in case you know we have to make some changes to the data output then what we have to do is we have to redefine our query we can adjust only the defined query directly we cannot apply any changes on the uh, materialized view and materialized view this is uh, being refreshed uh, periodically you know we can uh, create some update schedule based on the schedule it can be refreshed time to time and uh, coming to use cases materialized view that is more suitable for transformation and aggregation related uh, uh, stages which means uh, either silver or gold so basically in silver or gold layer what we are doing is you know we are uh, consuming data from multiple tables by joining then you know we are applying various transformations and aggregation so materialized view that is more suitable for uh, silver and gold layer right moving on to the next data set which is view this is quite similar to materialized view but only difference is materialized view that is storing the result set as a live table which can be available within the databricks catalog but coming to view here also we are defining a query which will be executed whenever we are calling the view but uh, the query output that is not going to be persisted as a live table so it is not available into the catalog which means data is not public publicly available for analytics and also this view can be referenced only within the pipeline where we have defined because this is not going to persist the data which means this particular view cannot be referenced in any of the pipeline outside this particular etl pipeline so in which pipeline we are defining this view only within that pipeline we can reference and what are the different use cases this is uh, uh, no more suitable where the end users or downstream applications are not needing the data because we cannot see the data once we have executed then this is not stored in the catalog so we cannot see the data so where the data is not needed for end users or downstream applications then we can go with view and also this is mostly suitable for data quality checks and validations and in certain cases you now we are having very complex logic for one of the data set it can be materialized view or uh, streaming table so we can uh, break that complex logic into multiple sub step so for that we can use view so the initial steps can be converted to view then uh, the final step ca that can consume the data from this view the intermediate result set then it can materialize the data as uh, either a streaming table or materialized view these are the different use cases for view i hope you understood right coming to syntax delta live table that is supporting only two programming languages at the moment one is pyspark another one is spark sql so i am going to show the syntax in uh, these two different uh, programming languages first one streaming live table in order to define streaming live table we have to use create then we have to use the keyword streaming table this is very important then we have to define the name for streaming table here i have given customer then after that we can uh, give the ingestion query which means i am having one uh, data lake storage i have created mount point within my uh, data bricks that uh, file is in the form of csv files i am using cloud files which means you know this is auto loader this is one of the streaming source then uh, we are uh, consuming data from this uh, streaming source based on that the data will be persisted as a streaming table in the name of customers so this is how we can create a streaming table in uh, delta live table using spark sql syntax so uh, while defining a streaming live table we can uh, apply uh, many other parameters and properties i will cover those things later but in this uh, video in this syntax i am focusing only on uh, the syntax to create different data sets right moving on to materialized view here we have to use live table create live table for streaming table we were using streaming table but coming to materialized view we can use simply live table that's the reason this is called as uh, materialized view or live table so i am giving a meaningful name which is a sales aggregate and i am defining a query 
here i am uh, having a query which is uh, joining two different tables one is uh, sales and customer both are live tables which means one of the in the previous stage you know, i have created uh, uh, you know different uh, uh, delta live table data sets it could be streaming table or it could be materialized view so in the previous stage you know we have defined some data sets and particular step i am consuming data from those two different uh, uh, data sets and applying various transformations then finally this output will be persisted in this materialized view the third one is view uh, in the view the syntax is live view here we were using live table for materialized view coming to view it is going to be live view and i am giving some meaningful name then i am defining select query this is how we can create different data sets using spark sql while developing delta live table coming to py spark we have to use python decorators which means we have to import the library uh, delta live table library once that is done then we have to use at the rate dlt dot table this is basically creating the table and this syntax is common for streaming live table and also materialized view in py spark see here here also we are using same at the rate dlt python decorator then dot table then how come delta live engine will understand you know, which one is uh, uh, streaming live table which one is uh, materialized view so delta live table delta live engine that is basically going to check what kind of data source we are consuming data from for example in this particular uh, logic data is uh, being consumed from the cloud files which means auto loader which means it's a one of the streaming data source so if you are going to consume data from any of the streaming data source then it will uh, create a streaming live table and in case we are going to read data from any st static uh, system then it is going to create materialized view this is the difference but uh, in terms of syntax both are same if you are going to uh, consume the data continuously then it is going to be treated as a streaming live table and we are going to consume the data from one of the st static uh, source then it will create materialized view and uh, coming to view the syntax is at the rate dlt dot view this is the only change and inside you know we can define the data source from where we have to consume the data i hope you understood right let me summarize for which uh, kind of uh, scenario or what kind of scenario, what kind of use case we can go with uh, what kind of data set this is a kind of summary so for streaming live table you know we can go with uh, any streaming data sources when we have to ingest the data from streaming data sources like uh, kafka or even tub then we can go with streaming live table and uh, we are having certain use case where we don't need to recompute any of the old data then we can go with streaming live table and uh, we are having certain use cases where we are dealing with huge amount of data and it is uh, incremental data uh, growing with high velocity then we can go with streaming live table and coming to materialized view in case you know we are uh, applying complex logic and that data is needed for multiple downstream queries or processes then we can go with materialized view because materialized view that is executing one query then it is uh, persisting that output as a live table so all the subsequent process can consume the data and uh, uh, when you know we have to use this particular materialized view in another pipelines then we can go with materialized view because in regular view that can be referenced only within that particular pipeline but in case we have to we have complex query that output uh, should be used in multiple other pipelines then we can go with materialized view and uh, finally in case you know we have to see the data and analyze the data during the development stage then we can go with materialized view because whenever we are executing it is going to material materialize the data inside the catalog so we can see the data what kind of output it has produced then based on that we can uh, test our data so for that uh, scenarios we can go with materialized view and finally coming to view whenever we are having very huge or complex logic for one of the data set like a streaming table or a materialized view then what we can do is we can break that into multiple smaller queries for that uh, scenario we can go with view and uh, this is also more suitable for data quality checks data validation using expectation and in certain cases we have to reduce the storage because view is not storing the data physically which means we it is not occupying any storage space if you have to reduce the storage for your use case then we can go with view so these are the different use cases uh, you know we can use one of the delta live table data set i hope you understood the concept hope you enjoyed this video if you like the content of this video please like and comment in the channel also 
subscribe this channel please don't forget to click on the bell button to get latest update on the data breaks thank you